Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Port Glasgow New Parish Church. It's great to see you all here this morning. And we welcome any visitors who might be joining us today. We are delighted to see you and hope that you'll come back and be with us all again soon and often. We welcome our congregation who are watching us online too, live on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Whether you're here in person or whether you're watching us online, everyone is welcome at Port Glasgow New Parish Church. Uh, we've had quite a start, uh, no choir today, um, a few of our congregation, keep them in your prayers, are either feeling a bit under the weather or some have got COVID, um, so keep them in your prayers. Um, and the ones who've got, are feeling a wee bit unwell, they're quite right not to come to church, we say that as well, if you're feeling a bit unwell, uh, a bit under the weather, um, possibly not to come to church just in case. Uh, and obviously with the holidays as well, we've got a few people missing, so. And then we came in, we turned on our beautiful organ, and the organ doesn't work. So, um, so we might have to sing just a wee bit louder today because we're using our piano. Um, but yes, our organ's not working again today. So let's begin our service on that jolly happy note uh, with welcome everybody, it's good to see you here. Good morning to one another. Okay, uh, just a few church notices for today. The first one is just to say that the Scottish Government rules have changed from tomorrow. Um, you no longer have to wear a mask in church um, from tomorrow, so basically from next Sunday. Uh, a few people cheering there. <laughs> uh, it's been a long time. And I'm sure you'll notice a difference in the singing once the masks come off. Um, but we always, we respect people though who want to keep their masks on, that's absolutely fine. And um, we totally respect that as well. So if you'd like to keep your masks on, of course you can keep your masks on. If you'd like to take your masks off next Sunday, you can take your masks on. Um, we'll leave that entirely up to you. Um, and it's entirely up to you where you sit as well. Obviously we don't have the social distancing anymore, but we'll leave it entirely up to you. So if you'd like to take the mask off, you can. If you don't want to take the mask off and keep it on, that's absolutely fine. And the next one's just to remind everyone that there's a trustees meeting right after the service today. So there is a trustees meeting here in the church right after the service today. Yes, are you coming along? <laughs> and at one o'clock today, we have a holiday club planning meeting. Um, so for all of you who have got that in your diary, or if you'd like to join the holiday club planning group, then please, it's one o'clock today in the small hall. Um, so that's the holiday club planning. We're hoping to have a summer holiday club this year, which would be really good. The next one is Holy Week services. So dates for your diary, um, the week of Holy Week. Um, all Holy Week services come from here at Port Glasgow New Parish Church. They begin at seven o'clock and we will end with some tea and coffee together as Port Glasgow churches together. Um, every night we'll be led by a different denomination. On the Monday night, um, the Church of the Nazarene, the Reverend Tim Burton, on the Tuesday night, um, the Salvation Army with the Captain uh, Ian Arthur. On the Wednesday night, it is the United Reform Church with uh, Susan Henderson. On the Thursday night, representing the Church of Scotland, is me here at Port Glasgow New Parish Church. The Friday night is the night that we all agreed we'd go back to our own individual buildings, and that's for Good Friday. And then on the Sunday, Easter Sunrise Service, uh, seven o'clock, we're all meeting at Coronation Park and then we're coming back here for breakfast and we have an Easter Sunday service at 11 o'clock um, here in the church. So that is the Holy Week services, um, so dates for your diary and the reason the Episcopal Church is not involved this year is because they're in vacancy at the moment, so their curate arrived just as all of the planning and various things had been done, so, um, but they want to take part next year and Father Matthew from the Roman Catholic Church will represent on the Monday and the Tuesday. But that is a Port Glasgow Churches Together event and everybody in Port Glasgow has been invited to that. Um, and it starts at seven o'clock on Holy Week. A reminder as well, Easter Bonnet Parade. So there are Easter bonnets on sale in Tesco, I've noticed. <laughs> no excuse. 
So, adults and children, uh, we would like that Easter bonnet parade on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, that'd be really good. And the last one is just to say that the, the last Sing for Joy takes place this Tuesday at half past seven. So that's the last Sing for Joy takes place this Tuesday at half past seven, and we'll see if the organ works by then. If not, we'll be on the piano. We'll see what happens. So these then are all the church notices for today. So our service today um, focuses on a Saturday night in Bethany. It's a small village near Jerusalem. And in just a few hours, Jesus will enter Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And soon he will cleanse the temple. He will curse the fig tree. He will teach in the temple courts and confront um, the rising tide of hatred from the religious leaders. Tonight is the last happy evening he will know. Tomorrow he begins his final journey to the cross. Tonight they celebrate. Tomorrow he will enter Jerusalem. In six days he will hang on a cross. As we ponder this dinner party, our eyes rest on two people today, Mary and Judas. Mary never says a word, and Judas says too much. One reveals her heart by what she does, and the other by what he says. And Mary pours perfume all over Jesus' feet. The room fills with scent. And you might have noticed as you come in today, um, there are scented candles everywhere. You might not be able to smell them. It was something I thought I'd try, but it is a big building. So, um, But we're sort of thinking about what was that, must that scent have been like? She poured scent all over Jesus' feet. Why did she do it? And what was the response from Judas? So let us begin with our call to worship. On the fifth Sunday in Lent, we gather. We come to remember and celebrate the good news of Jesus, who enjoyed time with friends, even with one who would betray him. We come as we are, full of faults and failings, yet loved by God. So let us come close to God as God comes close to us. We begin our service this morning with our first hymn, our first hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Now let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, we come to you this day to worship you and to ask for your guidance upon our lives. We come to be still. We come to listen. We come to be together. And we come to offer ourselves to you. 
For when we have spoken without thinking, when we have harmed rather than healed, when we have excluded instead of welcomed, forgive us and hear our prayers. We give thanks to God for all that we are, all that we have, and for the wisdom to pause and reflect in the hope that our words will bless the world around us this day and every day. Lord, as we will hear today and in the coming weeks, you were ever in and with Jesus on his journey to Jerusalem, guiding his choices and strengthening his courage each step of the way. As your beloved children, be with us and strengthen us on our journeys. Through our time of worship and our companionship with each other, teach us to recognize Christ in everyone we meet. Help us offer holy hospitality wherever it is needed to show love for others and to serve in Jesus' name in all that we say and do. All of this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who taught us when we pray together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to our next hymn this morning. Um, this is from uh, Carolyn Sims. We've uh, sung a few from Carolyn Sims. And this one is The Lord Went to a Dinner. And the tune is Oh Jesus, I Have Promised. So Mark, if you wouldn't mind playing the first verse um, so we can get used to it. And this relates to the scripture reading that we're going to hear today.
as we continue with our theme, let's listen together as we read from the Gospel according to John. John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. And it's entitled, Jesus Anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about half a liter of pure nard, an expensive perfume, she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Amen, and thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Let's continue in worship again by singing the next hymn on the screen. Again, it's one of the Carolyn's hymns. It follows our theme, and it's called Since We Belong to Christ, and the tune is Carlisle. So we'll ask Mark to do the same if he plays it through, and then we'll stand together and sing. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. Recently I read about the actor uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, um, any fans in, um, who rented a yacht for about £300,000 per week 
to go on a sailing spree. And as you can imagine, uh, the yacht came with everything. It was complete luxury. And the question is, is £300,000 per week extravagant? Well, it would be for me and for most people. But Leonardo DiCaprio is a millionaire. Um, he probably didn't think of it as quite so extravagant. Um, the most expensive hotel room in the world goes for $100,000 per night. And it's in the Empathy Suite, Palms Casino Resort, Las Vegas, in the USA. Just in case you're thinking about going down to Barhead Travel and booking it. But when I travel, for example, I stay at, I don't know about you, I stay at places like the Premier Inn or Travel Lodge. Um, that's about as fancy as I get. But Bill Gates um, has stayed at this resort, and as we know, he is a billionaire. So it probably didn't seem so extravagant to him when he paid that price. Chris Evans, the radio DJ, he purchased a Ferrari GTO for £12 million. Now that is an insane amount of money for a car. At one time though, he was the BBC's highest paid presenter, earning between £2.2 million and £2.25 million annually. So that actually probably doesn't seem so extravagant to him either. Then there was a story of a million dollar bottle of perfume. The million dollars evidently goes mostly for the bottle, um, so which contains 183 sapphires, 2,700 white diamonds, 15 pink diamonds, a three carat ruby, a four carat diamond, and various assorted other gems. All told, the bottle contains 2,909 precious stones that have been fashioned to resemble the New York City skyline. And the process took nearly 1,500 hours to complete. Now, I think we can all agree that that's extravagant. When we talk about something being extravagant, we're always talking about someone else, usually someone a lot richer than what we are. How much is too much? No one knows. Whatever else we may say, Mary's gift didn't seem that extravagant to her. She wasn't trying to show off or to make a statement about her wealth. John points out that Judas objected to this wasteful extravagance, but Matthew and Mark make it clear the other disciples joined in. They were indignant that Mary would spend so much in perfume just to pour it all over Jesus' feet. Why not use that money to feed the poor? Good question. So let's explore this story further. As we heard, Mary and, um, Martha and Mary sorry, provide dinner for Jesus and his disciples. They wanted to celebrate with them because Jesus had just raised their brother Lazarus from the dead. How must this family have been feeling? Overwhelmed, I would imagine. I mean, he brought their brother back from the dead. How could you possibly thank Jesus enough for such a kind gift? host a dinner for them, but they probably thought, what else could we do? That is when we hear that Mary comes forward with a gift, a very expensive perfume, which she pours, not sprinkles on Jesus' feet. It's not just a few drops, but a considerable, a considerable amount of fragrance. Now, if you've ever accidentally smashed a bottle of perfume or aftershave on the floor, then you'll know what I mean. It would have been some smell. It would have been strong. The house immediately fills up with the smell of perfume. She pours the fragrance and she then begins to wipe Jesus' feet with her hair. And after this act, Judas, the treasurer of the disciples, has different thoughts about what she's done. Judas criticizes her. He says, what a waste. That perfume was worth a year's wage. Surely it could have been put to better use. Could it have not been sold and the proceeds given to the poor. And it's interesting that Judas is a character in both at this dinner and, as we know, at the Last Supper. The Greek word for dinner is used in John's Gospel only in two places, here and at the Last Supper. There is another interesting connection with the Last Supper. The word used to describe Mary's wiping with her hair is the same word used to describe Jesus wiping the disciples' feet. There is clearly a close connection between this supper 
and the Last Supper, which is to come. And of course, they're both in preparation for Jesus' death. At this dinner, Mary knows that Jesus is about to die, so she anoints him. At the Last Supper, Jesus tried to interpret his coming death to all the disciples with a meal. But Jesus doesn't accept Judas's complaint. He says to Judas, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The word leave here is the same word in Greek as forgive in the Lord's Prayer. It means let it go. Let it go, Judas. Mary is right and you are wrong. And that is what Jesus is saying, that Mary is devoted and true and Judas is dishonest and false. Now Judas really is portrayed as the bad guy in this story and as we know, Holy Week stories are to come and we hear more about him. The listener seems to turn against him. We are told he skimmed money out of the common discipleship funds which were used to help the work of the ministry, especially with the poor. I mean, imagine stealing from the poor. The characterization of Martha and Mary, on the other hand, makes them out not just to be loyal to their leader, but a better example of honor and faithfulness. Judas always has been the figure to be despised when it comes to what was to occur in the arrest, sentencing, and death of Jesus. The story of Jesus, who represents goodness and light, needs a character of contrast, who is bad and represents darkness. And that's where Judas fits the bill. Mary takes center stage three times in the New Testament, and all three times she is sitting at Jesus' feet. In Luke 10, she wants to hear the words of the Lord. In John 11, she wants to experience the works of the Lord. And in John 12, she wants to declare the worth of the Lord. Whenever we see Mary, she is always sitting at Jesus' feet. She did not come to eat the meal. She did not come to fellowship with the others. She did not come to ask a question. She did not come to listen. She came to give her best to Jesus. And it quickly becomes apparent that she is far more concerned about her relationship to Jesus than about how others will think about her. It should not have been at all surprising that pouring out such an expensive ointment at Jesus' feet would cause shock, confusion, and even anger. But Mary does it anyway. Either she expected this response and consciously decided it was worth the cost to love and honor Jesus, or she was so focused on Jesus and showing her love for him that she didn't even bother to consider about what others might think. And so, as we look at this text, we see that Mary gives herself radically and extravagantly to Jesus. And she's far more concerned about a relationship to him than about what others might think about her. What then might that look like for us? What does it mean for our relationship to Jesus Christ? And what are its implications for our relationship to those around us? Well, first it means that we too are to offer ourselves to Christ, offering all that we are and all that we have to Jesus. And love is the greatest good that we can devote ourselves to. There are so many ways that we can do this. We, we know that we can pray, worship, study the scriptures, and so on. We should pour out our love on those who are in need. And Jesus urges us to serve those in need because when we serve them, he will consider it as a service to him. And when you give to those in need, when you serve someone who needs your help, when you pour yourself into someone else's service, whether a friend, a stranger, a child, a spouse, a family member, when you serve others, Christ calls you to do it as if you do it for him. We are to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves for the sake of Christ. But we should remember, as we do those things, that we too are also called, like Mary, to be more concerned about our relationship with Christ and about how others will perceive us. 
And there, the answer is quite simple. We set our eyes on what Jesus has done for us. That is what Mary does. Mary is the sister of Lazarus, whom we are reminded in verse 1, Jesus raised from the dead and returned to Mary and Martha. Jesus has blessed Mary. Jesus has loved Mary. Jesus has restored to Mary what she had lost in her brother's death. And with her eyes set on that, Mary gives what she has to Jesus, just as Jesus gave what he had to her. And that is the great thing. But then in this very text, Jesus points us to something even greater. In verse 7, Jesus says that in doing what she did, Mary was preparing Jesus for his burial. So as we know, and we're about to journey, Jesus would go to the cross. Jesus would pour himself out for people completely. He would pour himself out even to the point of death. And he would do it for all of our sakes. And knowing what he did for us, we pour out our love and our service for Jesus and for others. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our offering will now be brought forward, and as it's brought forward, we stand to sing the doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Because the person in charge of the sound is taking the, the offering in. <laughs> That's why the piano's not working. <laughs> Try again. now come to our prayers for ourselves and for others. It's an opportunity for us to pray for something that might be going on in our own lives or in the lives of someone we know and love. Um, with permission, um, it's also my sad duty this morning to announce the death of um, a Mr. Ian Kane. Um, Ian is the husband of Susie who comes along and joins our service. Um, Susie is fairly new to our congregation. Um, she came here from Westbourne Parish Church. Um, but yes, yeah, sadly, uh, her husband Ian um, passed away during the week at Inverclyde Royal and we keep our thoughts and our prayers um, with Susie and her family at this very sad time. Um, I don't have any information on funeral details as yet um, but we'll pray for Ian um, within our prayer today. Let us pray. Lord we come before you in dedication offering what we have as a token of our commitment to your mission and message here in Port Glasgow in our country and in our world. Take what we have offered and use it in Jesus' name. Loving God, we bring our words of prayer for our troubled world, aching under the afflictions of disease, poverty, and war. Help us and all those with the power to do so to speak justice. Help us in your name to bring peace and understanding to all people. We bring, our prayers, we bring our words of prayer for our community and our country in this time of change and optimism amongst the uncertainty. Help us and all those in positions of power, elected and unelected, to shine light into the darkness, hope into the hopelessness, and let us who know your love to bring it in word and deed to everyone that we meet. We bring our words of prayer for your church as we seek to serve the communities and parishes around us. Help us to understand the benefits of working together, not apart. Help us to understand your love as we dedicate ourselves once more 
to your message and mission here in this town. Lord, we bring our words of prayer for ourselves and all those we love, especially those who are ill at home or in hospital, and to those who are bereaved, especially the family and friends of Ian Cain, who sadly passed away this week. Lord, in a moment of silence, hear our prayers for all of those this week who are on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, hear our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Just before our Sunday club come to join us, we sing our next hymn this morning, our next hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Just like <laughs> Welcome, welcome. In you come. <laughs> hello, hello. 
Hello, and you come. Right, and you come. Right, have a wee seat. Excellent, good to see you. Good morning, boys and girls. That was all right, actually. There's quite a number of you missing this morning. Good morning. Now, we always begin our time, don't we, with... Uh, well, David's like, fist bump. We always either a high five or a fist bump, don't we? So, will we, will we do that, David? Will we go for a fist bump, will we? Yeah. And then Ben's saying a high five, and then... <laughs> Well, tell you what, Ben, if you remind me next week, we'll do a high five, right? Okay, that's fine. So, I, fi I said last week we'll do a high five this week. <laughs> See, you weren't supposed to remember that, that's the thing. <laughs> so, why don't we do both, right? Yeah, let's just do both. So, we do, like, we'll hold our arms up like this, and the adults can take part two, and then we'll, after three, we'll go this and this. Will we do that? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. All right. There. We did too, right? Okay. How has your week been this week? Anything good to happen this week that you want to share? Anything good, Ben? Right. You got what? I got this and it smells nice. You got that and it smells nice. Where did you get it from? Um, Sunday school. Oh, from Sunday school. Ah, right. Because you guys have. We're going to talk about those bags in a second, and that'll be in your bag as well. Yep. Yeah. Any. Any other good news happened this week that you want to share with us? School? How was school? It was good. Yep. Um, but when, we, when we came out of school, we had a short day. When you, oh, you had a short day, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So on Friday, I was at your school, that's right, and took you to Easter Assembly, and you had a shorter day that day, didn't you? Yeah, we had and had yeah, and you're now off for two weeks. <laughs> Can you tell Laura works for a school? <laughs> you're off for two weeks. That's right, so I took your Easter assembly, that's correct. Okay, now, what have you been up to in Sunday club? So Ben, you almost pretty much said what you were doing there. Um, so, do you want to come out the front and show everyone? Because it all looks really good. Yep, yeah, you just come out the front and we'll show everyone, okay? It looks good and it smells good. Right, so that's the wee clue here. Right. <laughs> okay, do you want to come up the front? We'll show everyone what we've done. <laughs> okay. Right. Right, come down a wee bit, Abby. Right, so you hold it up and show everyone so that they can see it. Right, you hold, uh, hold it up. Wait, we have something, what, like, we have a candle inside of it. Yep, so you want to explain what's inside. Puppies. Right, let's see. Right. Hmm, that smells really good. Do you know what that's called? Uh, no. No. Pop puree. Pop puree. Pop puree. <laughs> yeah, that's inside, isn't it? So that looks good. And you've got some love hearts and... We, we got to draw and put stickers on it. You got to draw and put stickers on it. And it's for someone, isn't it? Is it a gift? Who is it for? My gran. Your gran. It's for your gran. Excellent. Callum, can we have a look at yours? What have you done? Wow, that's brilliant. And do you know who this is for? Do you know who you're going to give it to? Mummy. Mummy. <laughs> yeah, and she's sitting right there, so she is. Excellent. Okay, and let me have a wee look. Let's have a look at yours. And you've got a ribbon on it as well. And it's lit up. You've got ribbons. Wow, that looks really good. And do you know who you're going to give your gift to? Mum. Mum. Your mum. Okay, excellent. Let's have a wee look at yours. Do you hold yours up? Right. Let's show everyone. That looks really good. I like that. And do you know who you're going to give your gift to? My big sister. Your big sister. Right, boys. Is this a wee gathering we're having here? Is this what's... <laughs> right. What about you? You want to hold yours up and show everyone? Right. Okay. And do you know who you're going to give your gift to? No. No? You've not decided yet? Right. I'm sure you'll decide. And what about you, Ben? Let's have a look. That looks good. That's a nice one. 
right? And you're going to give your gift to... My gran. Oh, gran is popular today. Gran is getting two gifts. Wow. Excellent. Yeah, so you're enjoying that wee, uh, that cover under there, aren't you? And inside, you've got pop puree and you've also got a candle. Yep, so I'm sure your gran and mums and all that will appreciate that. Okay, do you want to go and take your seat again? Right, go back to take your seat again. Right. <laughs> These look really, really good. Well done. Yep. <laughs> and so you were also thinking about the story of Mary and how Mary gave that gift of perfume to Jesus and she was devoted to him, and she wanted to serve him, and she loved him, so she gave him this really expensive, extravagant gift. How much was it? It was a hundred pounds, was it? It didn't, it didn't mention that in the Bible story this morning. It was a hundred pounds? Okay, there we go. It's been confirmed it was a hundred pounds. <laughs> so, but yes, and they gave, Mary gave Jesus this really extravagant gift and we thought today what we'll do is we'll get you those bags and we'll get you stickers and colouring pens and you've got pot puree inside and you've got candles and you can then in turn give that gift to someone else and maybe tell them a wee bit about the story you learned today. Now during the week um, myself and Lorna were thinking and we thought we were going to put um, the corn to spill the beans the resource we use. I know I talk too much I'll be finished in just a few moments <laughs> but According to Spill the Beans, the resource we use, it said to put um, scented candles in the bag. And we were thinking, great, that sounds really good. And then we thought, oh, wait a minute, paper bag, scented candle, children, fire, flame, that doesn't really... So then we, th we thought pop puree would be better. Okay, so you can give that to the person that you um, love, the gift you're going to give away. Um, Gran, you've got two coming your way. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. That was great. And we look forward to next week. Next week is Palm Sunday. So there will be a lot of stuff involved in next week's service, but you'll just have to wait and see. Someone's going to play the role of a donkey. Who could that be? Anyway, that's all I'm saying. So that's next week. Uh, we are going to sing our final, this is a song, this one. Now, if you remember, we sang this before, but the text was too small. Um, so Kirsten has very kindly um, made a video for us and made the text much larger. Um, so let's give this a try. We'll stand to sing. It's God is for us. Oh yeah, I've said, yeah, stand to sing. Yeah.
called to give and not count the cost. We are called to follow the path to the cross so that we can be Christ to one another. We are called to follow the path to the cross so that we can also gather in celebration beyond the cross at the empty tomb. We are called to be extravagant in our loving and serving of others. So toss caution to the wind, be as extravagant as you can be. Let the fragrance of Christ breathe in, with and through you. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. <laughs>